Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. So we left off right in front of this factory. So I think this might be the artificial limb factory, which is apparently uh, right after this factory, we need to take a right to head to the Kentucky Route Zero on-ramp. That's what it says. First right after the artificial limb factory. Which is probably the last place I want to go, because as far as I can tell, that's basically continuing the main quest, so to speak. And there's, I mean, look at all these roads. There could be so many places all around here. But anyway, let's look at the factory. A creek runs alongside the highway and then turns towards a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. At the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by trees, reads, A Mer Artificial Limb Factory. Okay, so we can't go in, into it or anything like that, but that is definitely the factory. So it would be here. Cub Run Highway would be the on-ramp to it, apparently. Um, so where did we come from? I think we came from here when I was looking... Oh! No, we didn't come from here. Guitar player. A young man in grey-stained clothes sits by the side of the road. He's playing a worn guitar. To his left is a blue mug, and to his right, a weathered dog. Aw, pet the dog. The dog closes its eyes and pretends to be asleep. <laughs> the young man strums absently on the guitar, hums tunelessly, and occasionally mumbles a word. Let's listen. The young man whistles hoarsely, stops playing the guitar, then looks up at Conway. He rambles for a few minutes about the weather, the dog, and its music, then returns to playing. As he walks back to his truck, Conway finds that he can hardly remember a word the young man spoke. Oh, are they... they're gone now. Just a momentary encounter in the night, and then gone. Yes, yeah, so we're looking for the mine. I just want to drive on every single road. So where exactly was the bait shop? It was right here, right? Yeah. I think maybe this is the road I took to get back to the highway. Let's see what's up here on some of these other side roads. And what happens if I go up here? Like, does that switch to a different map? Or what does this do? Oh, we can't continue up there. Okay. I wonder if you're supposed to get directions to the mine somehow. But surely I can find it without directions, right? It must be possible. Frenchman Knob Road. What a name for a road. Well, this is apparently the on-ramp for Route Zero. But, like, where? I mean... Which one of these roads is the road to the Route Zero on-ramp? Is it this? Oh, on-ramp, question mark. Hmm. Well, I don't think the game is just gonna, like, end when I go to the on-ramp. Especially with the question mark next to it, so perhaps I should go there and see what happens. Let's see. Elkhorn Valley. Hey, Blue. Conway brushes some dirt off Blue's hat. How's it going, Blue? Huh. Not sure that lady was right about the on-ramp to the Zero being here.
Better look around, though. Must be down here somewhere. Let's take our time and check this out thorough, okay? Do I see this thing creaking in the wind? Like, moving? Yes, it's very much moving. I wonder if this could be the old mine, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't have my light anymore. Entrance to what? Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Oh, and I get to choose what Shannon says, too. Yeah, so I guess this is the old mine, huh? Okay. Uh, no, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Inaudible. But can I trust him not to just change the locks? Yes, and I appreciate that, but... Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Falling on hard times. Stranger? Oh! Not only did I choose what Shannon said, but I'm actually playing from Shannon's perspective. Interesting. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on and I'm looking for the on-ramp to... Um... Do you believe in ghosts? Well... Let's see, uh, I do believe a place can be haunted, if that's what you mean. What about a person? Can a person be haunted? Sure, I guess a person could. Sometimes I feel haunted myself. Me too. Oh yeah? Did, uh, is that what led you down here? Yes. So, I guess this place must be pretty important. Maybe I'm in the right place after all. Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lysette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. You're making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. I have delivery for 5 Dogwood Drive. And I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady, name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way, and so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway with... What? Weaver Marquez, do you know her? So you saw her? Tonight? I know Weaver. She was... she's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years. She said... I was very upset, crying, and then my dad walked in the door. Just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So, maybe the Zero is down here somewhere. Maybe it is. Well, I won't mind the company. I've got business down here myself. I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or, anyway, she 
talk to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. Where did you see Weaver? At my workshop. She just appeared. I hadn't seen her since a long time. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If you're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else. We've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. But we can find a way to put a signal out ahead to do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. It sounds like you have ghost hunting equipment. Yeah. So Weaver just appeared at Shannon's workshop for the first time in a long time. Well, Weaver is obviously a ghost or something. Dead. Topology. Okay. Topology. That's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Alright, Blue. You gotta stay here, buddy. That runs into the mine's PA system. Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. Alright, give it a whirl. Into PA. Uh, anybody down there? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay, even... Uh, even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans on the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal script, you know. And if you want to run the fans for a, a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. That's horrible. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. Guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything's rationed. Here, set up that lamp of yours and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. Hmm. Clears his throat nervously. I heard the speakers back there crack, uh, back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something into the mouthpiece. Well... Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises in the mouthpiece. Conway taps the mouthpiece. Conway scrapes a coin across the mouthpiece. Conway whistles. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with the cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer. So just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy, just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story about something, or what did you have for breakfast today? Uh, I had breakfast with... Lisette? She made biscuits. We talked about the day's work. The 
then I loaded the truck. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. I hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Eh, you're probably used to it. One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable, or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax, try to breathe naturally. Conway breathes and thinks about the road. Conway breathes and remembers a moment when he was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. Uh, I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Conway breathes and visualizes a hot meal. Ugh. Christ! Jesus! Are you alright? What the hell? Uh, my leg is stuck. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? Uh, it's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful. I'm right here. Damn. Don't worry. I've got you. The leg's in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay, there's some luck, right? We should be able to ride this tram right out of one of the auxiliary exits. If there are any. I think there are. What about Weaver? We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So, the controls are over on your side. Let's get moving. Okay, do I... Oh, I see. Hold on a second. Turntable. Also, there's a little birdcage right there. It must be for a canary, right? Canary in the coal mine to see if the air is okay to breathe. They don't actually do that anymore, right? Is that... Is that a banjo hanging from the ceiling? Right there? Turntable. So that's gonna, what, make us go a different way, or... Uh, here we are. This might be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself, but this whole branch was underwater last I heard. How did that happen? Some careless miner or some unattended machine bored through into an underground lake. The water came in pretty fast, and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. But there was gossip, too. 
The trapped miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut all the lights off. But even then, it wasn't enough. Oh, Jesus. So I guess it was dark when they... This is a very cursed place, isn't it? You lost some people down here, didn't you? We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. It doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much. Or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All this junk hanging up around the turntable is from the company store. Just junk, you know. The miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place. Or as landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way is which down here. It's also dim and gray. Shannon connects two clip leads from her signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboat, so... Whoa, what is that? Oh, that's so cool! I'm not quite sure what it means, but... We're tuning in, like, these are signals, and we're obviously not getting them 100%, so the text is all, like, crackly. Um... So which way do we want to go? I can't even tell quite where all these things are. I see the scarecrow. I don't see the bat feeder, though. So I'm not sure where that would go. Uh, I don't know, pendulum in the casket? Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, let's go this way. Tape player. A dusty reel-to-reel -reel tape player is stashed beneath the track, loaded with tape, but starved for power. Ah. So we need to disconnect something else to be able to play it, right? Or do that? are still down here. What was that? Uh, look, there's a tape player down there. One of those old reel-to-reel -reel setups. When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording miners' songs. Really academic, ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes. Then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. And I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some coal script tokens to pay the miners with for their songs. Did your parents sing? Oh, uh, yeah, they sang. They sang in the mine for coal script tokens. End the road here.
Okay. Let's do the animal bones in the rowboat. I feel like we just went in a circle. Oh, nope. There's the exit. Well, there was one other way to go back there. I'm gonna go back there. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I think this is the way we haven't explored. Broken track. The tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. Okay, back to the exit. Thank God. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, okay, I just... That tunnel where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. Oh, I can talk as either Shannon or Conway. Let's talk as Shannon. If you wait for me here, I'll just go take another look around. Sure. Okay. I'll be right here. Oh, I hope I could actually play as Shannon. Wait, I thought I was gonna wait right there. Hey, Blue. I guess I didn't wait. The cramped shack is lined with wooden shelves, dusty stacks of tape reels, a notebook. Notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. Probably the parents, then? Uh, let's look at the red one. For J. Marquez. The pages are covered in disorient- oh, they're, they're coming. Some written horizontally and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided up into charts correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. Open the green one. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. So that would be, uh, Shannon and... What was the other person's name? Weaver? Conway opens the blue notebook. It's full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, what first looks like it might be 
Now Shannon. Oh yeah, this place. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? Oh. But uh, first, I didn't think you were coming back. Sure I was. Why wouldn't I be? Most everyone else I've met tonight has just disappeared. Well, here I am, damn it. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm just on edge. I'll be okay once I get away from this mine. How's the leg? Ah, I can walk on it, but it's slow. Well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. You don't mind me, uh, my hitching a ride, do you? I kind of got a lift... Uh, I kind of got a lift out here and wasn't sure if uh, when I'd be heading back. I can drive. Wasn't sure if I'd be heading back? Uh... Uh, yeah, I think you should drive. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. I still need to find the zero. Well, it's like I told you, Weaver doesn't lie. If she sent you here to find your on-ramp, this is where you should be looking. Or maybe you just weren't listening closely enough, and that's not exactly what she said. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and... Peonia, in the back of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Alright, let's go. Come on, Blue. Sets Antiques. I guess this is your truck? This is my truck. Blue, this is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Blue. I've got some dried banana slices in my bag. Would you like one? Take care of your friend here, and there's more where that came from. Let's go. Okay. So we gotta go back to Weaver and, I guess, listen a little bit differently than we did before. They never lie. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I think I'm going to return to the bait shop and see if we can find Weaver there. <laughs>